Hello dear students, welcome to the last and final part of our five part series on the top 20 species that you have to have a look out for your prelims 2025. You have the first one called as your dung beetle. The dung beetle are a certain group of animals called as tunnelers. Tunnelers because if you look at the dung beetle, they primarily are their habitat is primarily cattle dung. Okay, so large parts of cattle dung, this species, what it does is it tunnels. Tunnels means if there's a large structure of cattle dung, it tries to dig deeper and deeper into this cattle dung, thereby burying itself deeper and deeper into the cattle dung. Now, they are just trying to find a protective area to, uh, you know, go and create their larvae and, you know, so that, you know, all of it, then this species actually eats the dung also. So, there is food, there is habitat, all of the good stuff. Okay. And right now, once it goes in, in this manner, what happens is this beetle starts eating up all this dung. There is the nest of the beetle inside and nest in the sense the smaller ones the larvae of it inside and they are having a very happy life why is it so important for us and why are we even discussing in the top 20 why because this particular species is super important when it comes to decomposition and nutrient cycling when you study in your environment you would have heard about the decomposition process having different stages and the first stage primarily being something called as fragmentation fragmentation is the physical breakdown of any kind of material that need to be decomposed later so for example if you have a leaf fragmentation means physically breaking it down into pieces so now this dung which is so full of organic matter the dung beetle, it might just be tunneling into it and starting to eat it. But what is actually happening? This dung is now getting physically fragmented. It's getting into pieces. Once it is into pieces, it becomes extremely easy for the further decomposition to happen. And when decomposition happens in that manner, whatever carbon or nutrient is there in this dung gets released to the soil. Okay, so dung beetles for which there was a very nice uh, Indian Express article written about it and everything. So the dung beetles which are otherwise called as tunnelers enhance nutrient cycling, improve soil aeration, help in secondary seed dispersal and control parasites. And that's why it is featured in our top 20 list. Moving forward, there is a very unique other species that is featured in our top 20 which is your zombie fungus so what exactly is the zombie fungus zombie fungus is otherwise called as your cordyceps cordyceps it's a fungus okay it's called as cordyceps what exactly is it now what exactly is the zombie fungus what actually happens is this cordyceps is a fungus that is found in the tropical rainforest of Thailand. It sees it, it's there even in the different kinds of tropical rainforest, even in India. What actually happens over here is, first of all, you have a uh, ant, or let's take this ant species, which is there. This ant would be walking through the forest, and on the forest, maybe there are small spores of the fungus. What is the spores? The smaller propagating units of it. So the ant just walks through it. Once what happens is this spore tries to enter or it goes on to the body of the ant because it's walking in the soil. Once it reaches over there, the spore, the spore which is over there, it, it's first on the body of the ant, it slowly eats different parts and it enters into the body of the ant. Once inside the body of the ant, what happens is this, um, you know, the inside the body of this ant, it starts secreting a lot of these enzymes. Slowly the ant starts becoming tired, very lethargic. It will go and maybe, um, you know, it it will go and, you know, it leaves its colony and just goes down to a spot which is very 
does it will not it will move from its nest area wherever the ant is it will go and lie in some area and at that point what happens is the ant dies and once the ant dies this is where the fungus is full activity begins because why it's not that the ant was wanted to die at this point. What has happened is the fungus has released so many enzymes, the ant has become quite, you know, uh, tired and lethargic and the ant is now dying out because the ant is not getting any proper nutrition. And once the ant dies, the fungus starts eating every organ that is there inside the ant. So, the fungus gets food. Once the fungus is having so much of food inside, it starts growing. And while it starts growing, it will erupt from the body of the ant and it will have a structure like this outside. Look at this. And once it's outside like this in this manner, this structure releases the different different spores. And these spores again populate the soil of the tropical rainforest. This fungal activity is called as a zombie fungus. Why? Because it's making a dead animal do its bidding. Okay. And this is all the cruelty of your cordyceps. The important thing is this cordyceps is actually the secretions of it is something that is considered to be having so much of medicinal values. So much so that in certain uh, streams of Chinese medicine, this cordyceps and the enzymes and the spores that come out of it is called as your white gold. Okay, so remember one thing, on one hand the species is important because of its dietary patterns and what it is doing to the ant. The second feature it is important is because the secretions are actually something that is useful for human health. So much so that it's called as white gold. Why? Because it's not very easy to find it. It's very, very rare. The location of it is extremely rare. So I told you it's there in the tropical rainforest of Thailand. In India also in very rare tropical forest of the northeast, tropical forest of the western areas, western Ghat areas. We do find this but extremely rare in number. Got it? So this is the reason why it features in our top 20. Moving forward, the next one that deserves to get featured in our top 20 is your Nilgiri Thar. Why? Because I have already told you when we were discussing about Tiger Reserves that Nilgiri Thar, Tamil Nadu is doing a very active conservation project when it comes to Nilgiri Thar. Nilgiri Thar is listed as your endangered species by IUCN and in Tamil Nadu they have launched your project Nilgiri Thar. It is the only goat or sheep species found in the tropical mountains of southern India. It's the only caprine species that is found in this area. It's found in states of Kerala and states of Tamil Nadu. It can actually climb extremely. If you see, if you take videos of Nilgiri Thar, this is actually because it has such a uh, rock climbing capacity. You will see it in on extremely steep mountains also. This animal can just go very swiftly. It can go up to elevations of even 300 to 2600 meters above the sea level. In this, you know, because its feet is in structured in that manner, can quickly climb the rock and reach to the top. So again, it deserves to be in this list because so many reintroduction activities, the Tamil Nadu projects keep getting reported in, you know, it's very frequently reported in the news. And finally, the last important species that we have to discuss as part of our top 20 species for 2025 is your red sanders. Red sanders are undergoing so much of bad fate at this point. Why? Because this red sanders has now the, the protection of it has now moved on or the status of it has now moved on to endangered. Previously it was near threatened. Now it has moved on to endangered. It's an endemic Indian tree species. And it's it has a very restricted geographical range in your Eastern Ghats. 
sites has put it under appendix 2 but india has trying very actively to put it under appendix 1 why because there's a lot of illegal trade of red sandalwood or red sanders that is happening so keep this point in your mind its status has now moved from near threatened to endangered that means the species is severely affected it's even now currently inside its appendix 2 and that itself India had to put a lot of pressure to put it under appendix 2 but India is now trying to put it under or pressurize sites to put it under appendix 1 because of this situation of it and as you can see it's endangered and it's an endemic tree species. Wildlife Protection Act has listed it under schedule 2. Okay, So with that we come to the end of the top 20 species that we have to be aware of when it comes to your 2025 prelims. Apart from that, I hope the great Indian bustard, the Indian tiger, the one-horned rhino, the Asiatic lion and the reintroduction of cheetahs are always important, be it 2025, 26, 24, 23, whatever year it is. So these species are you know, any any given year, these five species that I told at the end are important. But these are apart from the five, what else could be important for this particular year? So I hope you have been quite aware of all of this. You've made a small note of it in your current affairs notebook and you will keep revising it as you go further. If you do have any doubts or if you feel the session has benefited you, please let us know in the comments. Until we meet next time. Take care and happy learning.